Welcome or welcome back. This is Pairs Old Knitting. I'm Jennifer, and this is a knitting podcast all about knitting, yarn adventures, and travel. Thank you very much for joining me today. And of course, I am so excited that you're here and that I get to share about my knitting and travel with you. Today, we are fe featuring Mexico 2.0. This is the second half of the trip I took with the love of my life through San Miguel de Leonde and Mexico City. And all of the gorgeous inspiration that I was able to see, touch, smell as we adventured through Mexico, um, applying it to my closet back home, bringing in some inspiration of Mexico um, into the wardrobe that I have already. I'm going to be using a 333 styling method video that I hope you're enjoying. And as well, I'm going to share about the yarn shop that I visited in St. Miguel with a little bit of acquisition. So let's get into all of this. I'll very quickly go on with what I'm wearing. I'm trying to wear something dark, yet still inspired by Mexico, so that you were able to really have your eye caught with the accents that I'm gonna be sharing for the styling piece of today's video of knitwear, of course. Uh, this is the Felix Pullover. This is, in my mind, a showstopper, but I was able to calm it down with the gorgeous black natural and rustic yarn. Um, the Felix Pullover is a very simple, but beautiful design of a raglan eyelet sweater. This is a design by Savory Knitting or Amy Christoffers and is definitely a go-to of mine. The wool that I've used, I've talked on end about in previous videos. It was a yarn that I purchased from the Cashmere Goat in Camden, Maine, and it is the Sheep's Black Door Yard Yarn. Um, it's fantastic. It's super rustic. Um, it does have a prickle factor, but I am here for it. Today, I've paired it just with a little thrifted scarf that I own um, as a little nod to Mexico, but hopefully does not take away from all of the fun styling outfits that I put together today. All right, so now we are gonna get heavy into all the styling. What I've done is I started looking at the gorgeous things that I encountered well away. So again, I'm gonna be talking about all of the inspiration that I took away from Mexico in conjunction with the styling pieces that I put together today. Then um, as we close off into the end of today's episode, I'm gonna be giving details of my favorite experiences while down there. So it depends on what you're here for. Click around and see what you're, what you're wanting to be involved in. And uh, yeah, let's, let's do it all. So first of all, uh, of course, the colors. The colors are beyond vibrant down in Mexico where we were. So again, it was the highlands of St. Miguel de Leonde and Mexico City. These are bright, you know, infused colors. We're looking at bright greens, orange, fuchsia, reds, bright blues, and they all play together in such a fun way. Um, the colors as well that I pulled from, um, and I think obviously I was gravitating to already in my packing video. So I, I knew what I was getting myself into with heading out to Mexico. I felt thrilled with the items that I brought of my garments and accessories that included um, items that I've sewn as well as items that I knit because while we were down there temperatures range vastly throughout the day um, start quite chilly when you need a sweater and end off in the day where you are a little little sweaty in a very light linen blouse um, as well with the divine colors that I came across while exploring and walking the cobblestone streets of St. Miguel and of course the streets of Mexico City were textures tons of textures as well that was just of course I think you know a fiber enthusiast delight um, we're talking different textiles we're talking different applications to textiles a lot of embroidery a lot of hand embroidery um, different textures within the fabric that offered a you know a physical sensation when you're when you're touching and interacting 
with the fabric, for instance, um, baskets and weavings. Uh, these are, you know, we're thinking traditional baskets where you can place items into and carry uh, baskets almost that were created as purses. Again, some did have a lot of vibrant color, but a lot of neutrals with that. Um, but the textures were just so fun. And I think just pushing that embroidery piece of handcrafted because where we were in Mexico with St. Miguel is a high frequency of artists and artisanal culture that really push and I should say enjoy um, the creativity of art and handmade items. We're going to talk about that as we move into the Mexico piece in the latter half of today um, as well. So now we're looking at color. We've got texture. So now we're looking at motifs, motifs that I saw a lot of repeating patterns, big and bold patterns, of course, integrating the color and texture, um, a lot of florals. And this wasn't only in print per se or art pieces and crafts that I saw artisanal wear, but was surrounding where we were. Um, a lot of, I believe this inspiration of florals for me, which I adored, was from the parks. It was the time of Candelaria. So a lot of areas and streets and um, doorways were covered with different florals, floral arrangements, um, floral arches, and even in the parks, as I featured in my last video, um, farmers and um, stalls had come in with plants and blossoms and it was just a floral delight. Never mind the visuals, but the gorgeous smell of fresh herbaceous things around us coming from the city of Toronto where we were gray for months and you know we're that that was the color um, along with no green uh, this was a very welcomed adventure we're gonna get into the styling now inspired by all of this gorgeousness that I was able to borrow from our trip in Mexico. The styling method of today will be a 333 styling method. If you haven't heard about it, that's okay. I hadn't either until recently. It is the easiest, simplest way of, I think, incorporating different pieces together of our wardrobe, which of course I adore with existing items we already have. So we are looking at three tops, three bottoms, and three items of footwear. Super simple. Um, I'm going to walk you through with what I'm bringing in that was already in my closet, pulling inspiration from Mexico, which is so thrilling to me. I hope you enjoy it as well. So first of all, we are getting into, of course, my knitwear garments. So I am bringing in the Amy slipover. Again, details for all of these items that I've made have been documented and shared as finished objects over the time of the channel. So I will link the different videos here that have details about it. The Amy Slipover is a design quickly by Sandis Garn. It's from the Soft for Women magazine. I've knit it in one strand of Briggs and Little along with uh, travel yarn, or I should say yarn that I was able to acquire well away. Um, the pink and the coral colors are yarns that I picked up in Vienna. The yellow uh, is a jowl and that is from Toronto. It's a much smaller uh, slipover than the intended design with these really long ribbons and open sides and it is a super fun delight. We are looking at different texture from the marling, from the ribbing, and of course the ribbons, uh, and lots of color to, to boot. So that's the Amy slipover. The second item of garment I'm bringing in for my top is the um, very orange, uh, sweater number 12, I believe. Let me just double check I'm not, yes, sweater number 12. This is by My Favorite Things Knitwear and is a top-down sweater construction in broken rib. This was knit using two strands, one of merino and one of soft silk mohair from Knitting for Olive in the colorway Hacchiato. And it is a boxy, fun, gorgeous, light delight. The next and last 
um, third top or piece of garment that I'm bringing in is my Kiwi sweater. This is no design at all, my own, I freestyled. I took that really chunky raglan from sweater number 12 from my favorite things knitwear and I made it into a stockinette delight. It's very sweatshirty but this color is screaming that herbaceous green that I saw in Mexico. We are going to get into the other items that I am pulling into this 333 styling method. So the next essential item is of course a crisp white blouse. I am not cheating because I had to wear something under the Amy slipover, but I promise you it is not paired with the other sweaters just in case I left it very simple and minimal so that the sweaters can shine even more. And I feel like I didn't, I didn't want to overstep my boundary of the 333 styling. Um, the bottoms, I'm pulling in three bottoms, of course, and we are looking at the first is a hand, I shouldn't say hand sewn, machine sewn, but made by me. Um, sewn pant, that is the Florence pants. These are pants that are made out of a fun, quite heavy orange linen. Um, they're elasticated waist, very free flow wide bottom. Uh, they are by Elizabeth Suzanne. And the next bottom that I have is a floral skirt. This is a thrifted skirt that I purchased a couple years ago from Kensington Market in Toronto. It has an elasticated back, a flat front with two pockets in the side. It is a bang of a delight, a floral goodness, of course, <laughs> pulling in the floral lovely motifs from Mexico. And the last I had to do with jean. So I've got a classic Phyla One jean here from Levi and they're a medium wash, super comfortable. They're definitely a go-to. And I think it allows for that option that you're able to see a relaxed, more cash, calm outfit, and some more, as you can imagine, a little bit colorful bursts. Then we are going to talk about and introduce the footwear. So three items of footwear that I'm bringing in, and again, sticking with this floral theme that I'm so thrilled to be touching on because we are entering into spring, at least here, you might be as well where you are, or a transitional season. So we have the floral Doc Martin Mary Jane. These were a Mary Jane that came out last spring. I've had my eye on a floral Mary Jane for years and finally did it last year. Um, they are only getting broken in now. They are a very crisp, heavy leather, but they are a fun item to have. The next item of footwear, we've got Big pop of color in a canary yellow. These are a leather and real wood um, mule, or I should say clog. Um, they're something that I cannot wear long distances, of course, walking around, but they offer a very fun pop of color. And of course, clacking sound as we walk. I enjoy that. The next and last item for footwear, um, pulling in more spring slash summer, but of course, fully Mexican inspiration is the Haracha sandal. These are a hand-woven leather sandal that I purchased well in St. Miguel. And I feel obviously if I'm doing a Mexican inspired video, these were essential to pull in. We are pulling in the favorite fingerless mittens. These mittens are currently in testing and I'm thrilled to say that I am I'm putting out a pattern very soon. You'll be hearing all about it. Um, for this, I just wanted a little more pop of color, a little more knitwear. So this is my little like bonus item on the 333 styling method. So we can say it's a 333 plus. Um, I've got two different weights of mittens. These are all gonna be in one pattern. Um, we have a super fun hunter orange mitten. These are in Briggs and little Atlantic. Yes, it's a nod to Canada and Canadian yarn, which I'm so jazzed about. Super rustic, huge pop of color, big bang for your buck. That is one, and this is the bulky version. The next is also a bulky version, but now we have Islandic yarn. This is the Alifoss Loppy. This is one size down, so a little less ease on these guys. And 
cream. We're looking at pretty calm um, and pairing that in with some of my outfits. The last is a worsted weight option. These are a uh, two strands of Ramaphenol held together and same idea as the bulky guys but just in a different gauge and a little more refined. Super fun color. It's a pinky, pinky purple color. And again, super inspired by all the color delight in Mexico. So let's do the styling. I'm gonna pull my computer a little closer so that I'm not missing a thing with you. And we will go through all of the fun styling pieces that I've come up with that incorporate what I've had in my closet with the knitwear and inspiration from Mexico with florals, motifs, colors, and textures. All right, so first off, we're looking at the Amy Slipover. It is a trio of fun color. We've got the mock neck and the long ribbons I call on the side. I didn't tie these in a bow, I've left them down. Of course, I've paired it with the blouse underneath and we have the simple jean and the floral Mary Janes on the bottom. We've got a lot of color going on, but I feel like out of the options you're gonna be seeing today, this is a milder version. Um, we've got uh, the Hunter Orange Bulky fingerless um, mittens, the favorite fingerless mittens on. And this is a fun look. And actually I've, from this video, I've been wearing some of these already within Toronto. I'm wearing this with my camel <clears throat> uh, retro jacket from the 70s from my mother. It's been, it's been fun to wear, let me tell you. Next up, we are maintaining the Amy Slipover, and now we've gone a little bolder. This, this is a little out of my comfort zone. So keeping the blouse on, we've paired it with the Hiracha sandal on the bottom, and we have incorporated the floral skirt. I have to say, out of the looks with the Amy Slipover, this is an outfit completely that I don't think I would repeat in real life. I've stayed true to the 333 styling method where everything is supposed to be together. So you basically end up with a grid of nine options. So this was essential to happen for the video, but I don't think it's, it's, a, it's a great option for me. Too much color, too many things going on. The last Amy Slipover styling outfit <clears throat> um, again, we've kept the blouse, but now we've added the Florence pant and the Hiracha sandal. This is to me a super great, like flowy Mexican inspired look. I really adore that the coral yarn from the marling in the, the slipover are pull, getting pulled out from the orange in the Florence pants. I'm really loving this outfit a lot. Um, and now I'm pairing it with the worsted weight option of the favorite fingerless mitts in that pink. I love that the pink from the marling in the mock neck are now playing with the fingerless mitts. I'm adoring this look and I feel like at this moment in time in Toronto, it's a little too chilly to wear it. But as soon as the temperature starts to improve and get a little warmer, this is getting worn in Toronto. The next three options, we're gonna be looking at the green freestyle sweatshirty sweater. This will be what's driving this next set of three, three outfits. We have the orange Florence pant, the Hiracha sandal, and I've paired it with um, an independent maker necklace. This is a cotton tubing that's macrame that was made by Not You, Not Me, who is a Canadian um, producer here, a Canadian artist and maker, and I'm loving the color play. I would have never put the green and the orange together in real life outside of making this video, I really love this outfit. And that's what I think is amazing about kind of playing with the clothes that we already have. I paired it with the bulky version of the fingerless mitts, favorite fingerless mitts, and I'm adoring it. It is a loud outfit, but I feel at the same time with the lines of everything, it really plays well together. 
And I'm definitely going to wear this as well. So, I mean, discovering of new things that I can place together, thrilled about. The next item, or I should say the next outfit with my green sweater, we're pairing it with the floral skirt. So we've got some interesting things happening here, and I don't know if I'm a massive fan. So this sweater, like I said, is very sweatshirty. I went down... Uh, not only on the needle size, but the stitch count to get the bottom ribbing of the body. And I don't think it's sitting really nicely with the skirt because the skirt's a little puffier. I think it needs to be almost a boxier fit to tuck in, like do a French tuck at the front. I do enjoy the colors, of course, the green pulling out from the green of the skirt, and I've got the yellow um, clogs on the bottom. The colors are making me really happy. I just don't think the silhouette does. I'm debating the orange or the pink if I was to pair with a fingerless mitt for spring because it does remain chilly here for quite some time, at least in the mornings and the afternoon. So this is, this is a look I would probably go for. Potentially, it's not my very favorite. It is fun and I love the color play. The pink, the green, the yellow, and then all the floral colors. That's why the skirt is so interesting. It offers a lot of different options. The last uh, look that I'm going for with my green sweater is bringing back the Not You, Not Me necklace in the neon yellow, but now we have the classic genome with the Horacha. This is a look that I feel is super easy it's, I would say, like on the cusp of classic, but meeting like a little edgier fun. And it still has that, like, for me, the me made vibe, which I enjoy. I don't need to look like I've gone to Zara or H&M to purchase my clothing. I really like that I'm wearing things that I make and they're unique pieces. I, I love that. I think as a maker, that really makes my heart grow. I've paired this because it is a calmer outfit compared to the other pops of color and motifs you've seen with just that really simple cream uh, favorite fingerless mitt. And this is really doing it for me. I could even put this with a heavier shoe and wear it right now, be super happy and still bring in the fun colors from Mexico into spring. I really enjoy that look. Uh, the next and last set of looks I have are with the sweater number 12 uh, with that orange hackiato color. I've placed together two oranges. They are different shades, but I think they're playing together okay. I, th I broke it up in a, I think, kind of crafty way where I've got a lot of color going on with the necklace, the neon yellow, and then I've got the floral Mary Janes on. It's an interesting look. Again, one I wouldn't have gone for mixing two different oranges, but I feel like it does work. I really enjoy the silhouette of the cinched in waist elastic waist pant that goes out on those legs very wide. The boxiness of the sweater, and I really enjoy the French tuck the best. I think that for me, where my waistline is, with the length of my legs, it gives me the best shaping, I feel. Um, I really enjoy this one. Surprisingly, again, this is, I think, the third outfit I would never have put together. And this will be, this will be in the rotation. Next up, uh, maintaining the orange uh, sweater number 12. I paired it with the floral skirt and the canary yellow clogs. This is a win for me. This is definitely, you know, I would wear this on a day where I'm feeling just a little extra a little extra color, a little extra fun, and uh, it's definitely a whim. So pulling in the orange, or pulling out of the orange, I should say, from the skirt of the floral and the canary yellow, there is a lot going on, but I feel like it, it, it just sits better, the lines sit better, the colors are kind of all happy together, and it works well. Um, I've, I've never worn this combo together, but this is something I could see myself doing. I'm debating, do I, do I pair it with the fingerless mitt for spring? I've got the pink. Yes, I do have to say, I feel my new favorite combo of colors is orange and pink. I really enjoy it. It's not super high contrast, but it's fun. It's almost like that idea of pink and red where I feel like a lot of people feel it's clashy and doesn't really go. I'm in love. Like, I think, I think it's a great 
color combo. The last um, outfit that I'm putting together <clears throat> is the sweater number 12 and the jean and the haracha. This is a really simple outfit. Again, the jean just allows everything to calm down a little more and be really neutral. This is a really simple like weekend look, even like knitting at home. You've got a sweater, you've got a jean, but still feeling good. I mean, even when I'm at home, I want to still feel good in what, what I'm wearing. Um, I do love the French tuck with this sweater. So that's just tucking it in at the waistline at the front and letting it free flow with the back. And now I'm placing the neon yellow macrame um, necklace on top to just add a little more. Like if I was gonna head out, I feel like this is a fun look. It adds a little more of color and interest. Lots of texture going on with the sweater with the stitches, so the, um, the broken rib but as well that mohair, it's a fun one. Oh my goodness, I feel, I love placing together um, different items in my wardrobe and the styling of it all. I hope you do, it's, it's such a good time for me and I hope it is for you too. All right, so that was the styling portion of today's video. Again, that is the 333 styling method and I'm definitely gonna be using this to incorporate new items of knitwear that are gonna be coming off my needles as well as with packing. I feel like this is such a genius and simple way of bringing very few items, but having enough flavor and interest as you go and live out of your suitcase for a period of time that really, I mean, this is what we all need if we're trying to pack light and do our carry-ons. We are now going to be getting into the travel component of today's episode. So I hope you stick around for that. If you don't, thanks so much, but I do have an acquisition to share with you first. Um, well in St. Miguel de Leonde, which is a, I would say a very temperate, well, we were there, temperate weather um, area of the highlands of Mexico, uh, I wasn't expecting a lot of woolly goodness. And there wasn't. There were a couple shops, yarn shops, or shops that had yarn, um, a lot of synthetic acrylic. And a lot of the yarn from what I saw the makers use and the items that were in these shops were crochet or embroidery. So they were actually using yarn or the synthetic yarn, acrylic mostly, 100% acrylic, to uh, create the um, embellishments on fabric with um, embroidery, which was amazing. The color is super vibrant. I, of course, was looking for more natural wools, more natural yarns, and so went on a mission. And I came across, I don't wanna say, it, it is Kathy, Kathy's Yarns, St. Miguel de Leon Day. So it was open for only the weekend with Friday as well. And um, so went and ventured in there and I had such a great time. Um, I think this is it, when I'm away, I think where I really gravitate to of my comfort zone are cafe, cafe knitting, and of course yarn shops. I mean, this is, this is a passion. Walking around Kathy's Yarn Shop, it was a colorful delight. A lot of different textures, which I mean, I think one could say for any yarn shop, yes, but this, this was a lot of interesting different yarns. A lot of different blown yarns, a lot of different spiky yarns, you could say. There were some rustics, but not many. A lot of more smoother or combined um, wool, uh, like 100% wool or wool with another fiber in it, some acrylic or not like synthetic mixes as well. Um, I did manage to get my hands on something of very unique interest to me. Um, I do want to say that Kathy was such a delight to talk to. She was literally a chatty Kathy. We had sat down and chatted for quite some time as guests were popping in and out and she just has such a big passion for knitting. She is an expat from the U.S. who has lived in St. Miguel for I think it was 20 plus years. I almost want to say 30 years. So she was a guru of the area for sure. Knitting is a passion of hers and she loves to talk to people about 
all things knitting. I was asking questions about her yarn shop and she was really happy to answer. She was on the Shire side, so we did not do a camera, but if you ever find yourself in St. Miguel, you have to go visit Kathy at Kathy's Yarns. Here's what I purchased. My first item are these pom-poms. She was really into different textures. You could tell of what she was wearing and oops, and the samples that she had in her shop. Um, so she has these little pom-poms that she made in different sizes that I just thought were the cutest things ever. They're just uh, like a felted wool. So I, you could probably, I could probably make these too. Um, and I just thought they were so good. So I was asking Kathy, like, what, what could I do with these? What could I make with these? She's like, anything. She showed me, like, you know, so many different samples of things where she had sewn them onto scarves, sewn them onto sweaters, gloves, um, hats as little, like, bobbly features. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these guys yet as I'm looking. Um, okay. I mean... Is this, is this me? I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I could do it. Oh, it's, it's a ridiculous match. And I did not have, <laughs> while I was down there, I don't know. I'm not sure if this is me. Um, but yeah, I, I ended up just getting little pom-poms because I thought they were super cute and super fun. The other item I bought from Kathy is this beautiful skein of silk. This is um, different strips of silk that have been sewn together end by end to create obviously longer um, a skein of, of silk and it is just the most gorgeous delicious color. Um, there's no ball band on it. There's no gauge size. I was asking Kathy, you know, how many meters do you think is in here? Um, she explained to me that she was able to go back and forth within her shop about 10 to 15 times depending on the weight. Okay, that's not, you know, that's not super helpful, but um, I appreciate it. So what I think I'm going to do with this is um, do something for the neck. It is a gorgeous um, fabric. I mean, I wish you could feel it. Of course, it's silk. It's amazing. Um, this, I believe, she was explaining this big story. It is from uh, women in India. There's a, I believe, a co-op situation that's happening. And it is from these women that she purchases these big, I'm guessing, you know, loops of this um uh, piece together silk and then she binds it off to skein it up and uh, yeah I think it, it's definitely going to be something for my neck knit on a really big gauge probably a little gappy and almost be like like a scarf or almost like a necklace is what I'm envisioning but I think it's going to be it's going to be interesting it's very it's out of my comfort zone but I'm there and I'm there for the color like oh it's it's a good one. So that was Kathy's Yarn Shop in San Miguel de Leon Day. I'm going to now talk about the latter half of our trip in San Miguel and then our Mexico City component. There's so much to talk about. I really tried to whittle it down into my very favorite things while we were there. I have to talk about the coffee, of course. If you're down in Mexico and ever have an option or are interested in coffee at all, um, the coffee that was from Oaxaca was my absolute favorite. It is the most smooth, delicious coffee. It's rich, but it's just such a delight of flavor. The taste is incredible. And this, I, I mean, I found throughout the coffee shops, there was a lot of fabulous coffee and coffee shops as we ventured through Mexico. My two favorite spots that I sat in it, sipped, was Lavandra Cafe and Kaibok Coffee Bar. Um, both were fantastic. Both were multiple levels of coffee houses and their coffee was incredible. Uh, you can choose your own beans at La Vendre. They also have in-house baked goods. Our favorite item was the rolled de pistache or the pistachio roll was incredible. Beautiful fresh plates of food for breakfast and lunch. Kaibok coffee or coffee bar. Um, they had a bean pairing with different espresso type drinks and it was just, they were always amazing. I had so many different kinds. It was 
a delight. They bring in um, baked goods fresh every day and they were incredible as well. They also have beautiful <laughs> breakfast and lunch plates. The fruit plates were always my favorite with granola and yogurt. Wow. I'm going to be talking about the dining options really quickly that we had the delight of having while in St. Miguel. The first um, restaurant that I briefly spoke about, but there was a second location that we tried was Los Milagros. We had already dined at the Terrace, which was the top of the Merador um, of the overlook of the town. The second time we went was a sister restaurant uh, within the main central zone, and it was equally fantastic. You didn't have the view of course of the city but the food was just as beautiful very fresh Mexican delicious food with great margaritas and massive plates of food um, but also had mu music they had the three amigos that were there playing their Spanish guitars playing their guitars I should say playing their guitars and it was such a fun time. The second place that we really enjoyed was La Fablosa, which is an Italian restaurant newer on a rooftop down in the central zone and has hand slapped Ita Italian pizzas. It was fun and a surprise. Um, yeah, it was, it was a great time. And our very favorite spot, which is a big surprise, I think to both of us, was Don Taco Tequila. This was recommended by women we had met on a rooftop sipping over cocktails and I asked where should we where should we go next for um, for dinner and they suggested this location and it's a vegan restaurant I'm all up for it I don't need to have meat to be happy with my meal love my life very much more meat affinity and he loved it so much that after the first time, we tried to choose what our favorite restaurant was to dine for our last night well in San Miguel. And he said, Don Taco Tequila. So we went for the second time. They, as I said, are Mexican vegan restaurant. They have amazing tacos and nachos and all kinds of delicious Mexican uh, delicacies. Their cocktail game is amazing. It was, I, I know it was the best margarita that I had well away in Mexico. Such delicious food, all fresh, good. Um, no outside dining, but it was so cozy and so fun. I wanna wrap up St. Miguel with talking about the markets. The markets are vast, of course, and open different days, depending what you're looking for with food or artisanal items. Um, two were my favorite and located very close by to the, the accommodations we were staying in. The first market that I really enjoyed was Mercado San Juan de Dios. Um, this is close to the Lavandra Cafe, so right down in the central zone. They have a lot of handmade items, uh, woven items, jewelry, pottery, leather goods, and textiles. They took cash and credit card. Uh, then the second market that we loved was the Mercado de Artesanadas, and this is open every day. Again, a ton of handmade items. You're looking at baskets, wooden toys, pottery, tapestry, and textiles. That was mostly cash only but the markets were such a joy to walk through um, and combined, of course, within buildings and of course, open air. Seeing all the Mime goods were just a delight and we did make a little bit of purchases, so that was great. The last chunk of our stay in Mexico was Mexico City. We decided to take a bus down because there are a few ways to get out and in to St. Miguel. So we did, I think it was a four or four and a half hour bus ride south from St. Miguel de Allende to Mexico City. And this was it. We were there for three days. So we packed in kind of what we could and we really enjoyed ourselves. So it is a massive city. Of course, you're looking at, I think it's over like 9 million easily by now, um, uh, 9 million people. It is a very big city as well. So not only tons of population, but very, very big space. There's different districts, of course, just like any other cities chopped up into. And uh, so we, we only had a dabbling of, of a few areas just for time. Um, 
as well, I think just to note, uh, the introduction for us when we woke up in the morning from our hotel, we saw mountains, of course, in the vista, which is amazing as well. Coming into a city in the evening, you're, you're sussing out the land in the morning. And we saw clouds that were kind of hovering over the mountains in the distance. In addition, we saw puffs of smoke coming from one and I thought, this is bizarre. So the love of my life looked it up and sure enough, active volcano. Um, they had an eruption in 2005. I didn't look into it that much because at the time I was a little weary of actually being there and seeing this active volcano puffing out smoke as we're physically in Mexico City. Um, there had been reactivity happening of 2023 in May and continues to this day. There was a little pop up in the news the other day that the activity was a little more than normal. So I'm considering ourselves pretty lucky that there was nothing more of the activity, but just know, never mind with the be beautiful mountain vista, there is an active volcano just outside of the city. Interesting. Um, as we ventured into Mexico City, exploring, smelling, sipping, of course, which was fantastic, um, we did a very touristy thing. We went to the Templo Mer Mayo uh, Museum, temple that laid in the central area, which was called the Tenochtitlan. Uh, this was the original name of Mexico City from many moons ago. And uh, the temple itself was called the Hui Teocali. Uh, this was two shrines that were constructed by the Aztec people. Um, one of the shrines, or I would say construct constructions, um, were the highest points of the temple. One was dedicated to the god of war, and one was dedicated to the goddess of rain and agriculture. Uh, so again, depicting all of that belief system of the Aztec people. The building started in 1325, and um, in future years the footprint of the temple had been constructed into yet even a bigger temple six more times in fact with these huge heavy rock a lot of volcanic rock of course was used because look look where we are so in 1521 the temple was taken apart to be repurposed for other buildings um, by the spanish during the time of the colonization of Mexico and Mexico City. Um, over the centuries, the location of the temple was forgotten and they knew that there was a temple located within Mexico City, but it wasn't known exactly where over the time that had passed. Eventually, in the early 20th century, the temple was rediscovered. There was a theory that the central cathedral that was built by the Spanish had been built on top of the temple and they were correct, that is what, that is what happened. Um, we didn't do anything about it at the time. Again, this is all information that we obtained over the time of the museum. Uh, in 1971, electrical workers were digging and hit a large stone disc. That disc was a big stone etching that had been um, uh, made by the Aztec people depicting some of the goddess uh, and gods from 1325 when the temple was constructed. Uh, this springboarded the archaeologist's interest and in action on excavating the site uh, and finally so that was in the 70s, late 70s, um, and in 1987 was deemed a UNESCO heritage site to protect the land and the what was left of the construction of the temple. So today this land um, and site stands as a museum uh, with an entry point into the ruins uh, and a building that houses the artifacts discovered over the decades of the Aztec people shedding light on the belief system and culture. That was our trip. We got home safely, which was lovely. We had such an amazing time in Mexico, exploring and doing all of the things that we chatted about. 
as well, we were able to spend quite a bit of time together, which was my favorite. Um, so it was super lovely. I do want to end uh, the Mexico piece with sharing a travel note. Um, I have created a video on travel and knitting in the past. If you haven't checked it out, I very much invite you to do that. But there was a surprise traveling within Mexico in the air and coming back from Mexico. Um, the sharp objects, uh, I believe had changed. So they have a maximum length now of six centimeters in length that you can bring on to the airplane uh, on a carry-on. If they exceed over six centimeters, you cannot bring them on. So you decide as a traveler what you're going to do. This was discovered when we were flying from Puerto Vallarta into uh, Leon, and I was told that I could not bring my knitting needles on the plane. This is the first time this has ever happened to me with all the traveling that I've done. And so it was okay. I had to um, put my kit, and it was my whole knitting kit, this guy I brought. So I was, I was being a little aggressive with my knitting needles because these are, you know, these are metal needles, and they definitely exceed the six centimeter um, length. Um, so I had to check my small suitcase, which I never do, but it saved me from having to, I guess, get rid of or throw out my knitting needles. So I wasn't able to knit on that flight. And I thought perhaps that was the rule just flying within Mexico. I was wrong. Um, I was also not allowed to bring these on the flight back from Mexico into Toronto. Again, it was that six centimeter length maximum that I could fly on with. So these I also had to, again, put in my small suitcase and check my suitcase. For me, it wasn't the end of the world because I was going to carry on that small suitcase with me. It just means that we had to have enough time, which we always do when we're traveling at the airport, um, to go and check in my baggage. It was totally fine. I just want to share with you because, again, I've never had anything like that where I've had to check my baggage or even check my needles. But the sad thing, of course, it meant that I had about, I think it was like five hours of no knitting on the plane while sitting. That was, that was a little challenging, I have to say. So I would say if you are considering going down to Mexico or any other country for that matter, and you do not know the exact rules or maximum length of sharp objects, be sure to check that out before you go. So just be mindful and do your due diligence before you go on, unlike what I did. We are interrupting this podcast with a very important announcement of a giveaway. This is the very first Pairs Wealth Knitting giveaway ever and so excited to be doing this with you. Um, this giveaway was coming from my last episode where I announced it would include a copy of your very own Arctic Knits. This is a stunning knitting pattern book by the Petite Knitter just gorgeous. This was provided by the publishing company uh, Cadrille, so thank you to them. And of course, the Gros Sac, the large project bag from Biche and Bouche, provided by, of course, Biche and Bouche Yarn. Gorgeous, so exciting, and this will come as one little lovely package to a winner. So what I've done is I've put together all the comments, and thank you so much for your super lovely positive comments about everything from the podcast, my birthday, so thank you. And of course, um, little bits and bobs about Biche and Bouche and Petite Knitter and her stunning colorwork patterns. We are going to get this sorted out. So I put in the 153 comments into a comment um, randomizer. So let's do this. We are going to click on the generator and we are starting this. So exciting, first ever giveaway. We're gonna click start here. There she goes. Look at all these wonderful, beautiful comments of you lovely viewers and knitters. So thank you. And we have a winner, how awesome. Uh, Deidre Schoessler, uh, 2345. I will put your information, just the, of course, the at uh, Deidre shuffler 2345 um, up on the screen um, if I can please ask and I'm assuming your name is Deidre indeed um, for you to contact me via email or Instagram DM um, my information for contact 
is below in the show notes. And oh my goodness, this is so great. I'm just so excited for DG Schussler. Um, I don't know where you live, but I will make sure that I provide this little package to wherever you are. Um, just reach out. So congratulations to Deidre and thank you for everyone who entered the giveaway. And for those that are you um, are still here and watching, thank you for being here. So that is the finale of our time within Mexico. I really enjoyed putting together the in Mexico inspired inspiration styling video as well um, of this episode and that I was able to relive part of the travels that I did with you today. So thank you so much for being here. If you enjoy the episode and the content, I very much invite you to like and subscribe to the channel. And if you are finding, finding it within yourself, um, I invite you to click on the link below for the Ko-Fi account. I hope you stay tuned in future episodes and or follow me on Instagram because I feel thrilled that I have my very first pattern coming out for uh, the favorite fingerless mitts. I hope you join me on that adventure. I have been enjoying every bit of it. It is getting tested now for the second uh, edition, the worsted weight. Uh, there's worsted and a bulky and it's going to be houses one pattern so you pick your own adventure you pick your yarn and the gauge and you go and i hope you enjoy as well thank you for being here again i wish you very much great joy in your knitting and until next time